John Shadanian is here from the law firm of McCusker and Selmy, Rosen, and Carvelli. The next televised council meeting will take place on Tuesday, October 20th at 8 p.m. A reminder that Teaneck local Jay Levin's book, Images of America Teaneck, is still on sale in the township clerk's office for $20. Also a reminder that the 2020 census has been extended to October 31st. So please don't forget to file. Please don't, please get involved and be counted. Uh, just so you know, the council did not have a closed session prior to this meeting. And again, as a reminder, November 3rd is election day, but voting has already begun. So please check your ballots, fill them out. And the box here in Teaneck is located in the north entrance near the, uh, of the township offices. So please, please get your vote in and make your vote count. Okay. Um, I think we have one council listed item, uh, council member Kaplan. Yes. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, when I saw your uh, resolution for the uh, BLM resolution, I noticed where it said unequal enforcement of laws has resulted in the disproportionate arrest and incarcerate incarceration of black citizens and housing discrimination. And uh, it's been pointed out that question number one on the ballot is for marijuana legalization this year. And I thought it would be appropriate to include a resolution which says in part, the Council of Teaneck has renewed its commitment to racial justice and racial equality, assuming we pass your resolution today, in part because unequal enforcement of laws has resulted in disproportionate arrest and incarceration of black citizens and housing discrimination. And in the state of New Jersey, if people choose to legalize marijuana, those that are saddled with convictions for what will now be completely legal conduct would face a substantial obstacle when it comes to benefits and employment and other areas of civic life. So I uh, would ask my colleagues to join me in putting this forward. And I'd like to make a motion to add it to the consent agenda for today's meeting. Second. Discussion? Um, I'd like to just add some discussion. Go ahead. Uh, this is something that our Senator Ron Rice from uh, the state of New Jersey has long championed this concern with regarding the um, legalization of marijuana. And I concur that it is indeed an issue because as we discussed this, even in our local township and municipality as to what we would do if marijuana was legalized, um, have a long expressed concern over the fact that there's a disp disproportionate number of people that are incarcerated. So I am definitely in favor of this. Um, and I think it speaks hopefully volumes to the acknowledgement of the disparities uh, against people of color, particularly black Americans. So thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Yeah, Mayor. Go ahead. Um, I want to thank Councilman Kaplan for introducing this measure because there needs to be a comprehensive review of state policy towards marijuana, particularly in light of the growing number of states where marijuana is already legal for medicinal and personal use. Regardless of your views on marijuana, it has been here for a long time and it is not going away. So we need to educate people about it and regulate it. Our country and state is caught in a web of incompatible laws, and this November's ballot question can help us navigate a new path forward, and so could these pardons. I also would be remiss if I did not mention the many reports conducted by the American Civil Liberties Union over the years on racial disparities in marijuana arrests across the country and how that is further proof that we need to rethink our laws toward marijuana going forward and the pardons that need to go along with it. So thank you, Councilman Kaplan. I support this initiative. And I just want to mention for people uh, that may not be familiar, this is not an advocation one way or another. You can ask me privately how I feel on that, on whether marijuana should be legal. This is a reckoning for New Jersey. Uh, if marijuana is legal, how we deal with the people saddled with convictions that still cannot gain employment, still have to check off they've been arrested, are facing housing discrimination based on their uh, prior convictions, all for conduct that the people of the state of New Jersey are now deeming completely legal. So uh, I 
thank uh, Councilwoman Rice for her words. And uh, should we pass this, I'd like it to be sent not only to our representatives and the governor, but also uh, local towns, because I think others uh, have expressed uh, privately to me that they're already going to put this on their agendas. And I think we can get a lot of towns uh, to buy it. I too want to thank Councilman Kaplan for this. Um, I think it is very timely. Uh, we're going to be voting on just the yes, no on whether or not we're for or against, but the devil's in, in the details. And uh, if we can make our voices heard uh, on this topic, uh, I think uh, the more the merrier in terms of uh, making sure that this is part of the regulatory process uh, if this is passed in November. So I thank you to uh, Councilman Kaplan. All right, so what we'll do then is uh, without objection, uh, this will be moved uh, under resolutions uh, when we get down to uh, voting on the resolutions. Okay. We need a vote? We need, yeah, we need a, uh, sorry, Mayor, we need a motion and a second and then a quick roll call to add it to the consent agenda so that it will Got just it. be added and then we don't need to visit it again. Okay. Keith, will you move that? So yeah, I made the motion. Okay. And I made the second. Okay. Uh, call the roll, please. Councilman Kaplan. Yes, please. Councilwoman Oregon. Yes. Councilman Bagan. Yes. Councilwoman Mommy Rice. Yes. Deputy Mayor Schwartz. Yes. Deputy Mayor Katz. Deputy yes. Mayor, Deputy Mayor Katz. Mayor Dunleavy. Yes. Cool. It will be added to the consent agenda. I will assign it resolution number 211-2020. Okay. Um, before we move into uh, public comment on the resolutions, uh, I, I just want to say a few words. Um, first off, uh, I want to thank the mural group, especially the students, for bringing this forth to us. I think it's, it was a very important thing that we do. Um, I know all of you have heard that my feelings were that we needed to do something as a township, and uh, I'm glad that we have uh, come to an agreement. I also want to thank my council members for their input and perspectives uh, that helped us get to this resolution today. Without your help and, and your ideas, uh, that this would not have occurred today. Now, I want to remind people that, that the key issues that we faced here, in, in part, had to be that this had to come from the council. It had to be council speech. And I, and I remind people of what we had to do with the pride flag in order to do that without having uh, issues with creating uh, a public forum uh, where we would not be uh, under the control of what went on. Uh, we had concerns, as, as we have seen throughout the country, uh, of other towns not doing this the same way we are trying to do it, and resulting in vandalism and counter murals being put on the street where the town or the city would not be able to stop it. There are currently pending litigations in the New York City and District of Columbia that are talking, are talking about the, the issue of putting these things on the streets throughout the country. And I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think the DC one is in a federal court. Uh, there's uh, been two more since. Two more since, thank you, Keith. Um, so we believe that by putting it on township property and I wanna stress this, at a location that the mural group, not us, proposed, and we all agree to, achieves a win-win situation for the township. And we also wanna say that we, we wanted the design, the council wanted the design to be one that would focus on the township support of our black community now and in the future. That TNEC stands against all forms of racial prejudice and we thank the mural committee for submitting the design that we have before us today. So again, thanks to the mural committee and my council colleagues. And now, uh, Doug, if we could open this up for public comment. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Oh, yes. Deputy Mayor. Yeah. So first of all, I do also want to recognize and thank you for your leadership on this uh, in, in uh, hopefully bringing, um, you know, a unanimous vote. Um, I know that this resolution has uh, a, a, um, a renewal period, and if this passes today, I, my next uh, 
nom my next vote will be to ask the attorney to get a resolution on an upcoming meeting to renew for another additional 90 days. Um, so I just want to make mention of that, that, af that after good welfare and after we vote on this, that I'd like to make that uh, um, motion. Very good. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Councilman Weiss. Um, woman. Yes, I just wanted to state that the, um, I just wanted to confirm with the attorney that we do have something in an ordinance um, that specify specifically about the mural. I know that we were likening it previously to um, signage, in honorary signage, but I just wanted to know if there was specific language in an ordinance that addresses a street mural. No, Councilman Rice, there's language in the resolution that addresses that, um, but this didn't, there's no ordinance that restricts where we, where we put things on our own property as there were for flags. There were already flag ordinances in existence when we did the one for the pride flag. That's why we had to amend the flag ordinance uh, and, and, and have that language put in there. This resolution solves that same issue. Okay, great. So this resolution in and of itself gives the provision. Correct. And Thank it's you. also, it's also, there's a limited time frame here too. So. Okay. All right, so uh, Doug, if you want to open it up now, please. One, two, three, Sandy, I'm bringing you in. Remember, you have three minutes. Sandy. Uh, good afternoon, Council. Uh, first, quickly, I'd like to congratulate Mrs. Lacey. I want to uh, thank uh, Councilman Kaplan for the addition you just made. And I also want to, to add many thanks to the town clerk, Doug Ugione, for sending out email after email explaining in detail the mail-in ballot voting procedures. It is exactly what needs to be done to ensure maximum participation. Thanks always to the manager for too many helpful acts to even list. On a different note, Sometimes if we do not act on an issue in a timely manner, if an action is taken too late, however well-intentioned, it all but kills the point of the action, relegating it to an empty gesture so far after the fact that it might seem to be merely political expediency. Many believe that's what happened a year ago when the pride flag wasn't raised in conjunction with the 50th anniversary commemoration in June of the Stonewall Uprising. By October, the point of the flag raising was all but lost. Let's not make the same mistake again in response to the BLM movement and request to create an original permanent mural where it can be seen. This is a critical teaching and learning moment. Let's not lose it. I personally pledge $100 for materials toward the creation of a collaborative, student-driven public artwork that aims to unite us, heal wounds, and teach love and respect while recognizing the sacrifices and pain of and injustices done to black and brown brothers and sisters all over this country. We shouldn't cherry pick what part of Teaneck history we celebrate. Yes, in many ways, we have a proud history. Let's also own our collective mistakes and go forward. Let's do this now. Let's take the risk and dare to hope in a future even prouder than our past. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. I'm bringing in Miss uh, Hillary Goldberg. Miss Hillary Goldberg. Ms. Hillary Goldberg, you need to unmute yourself. All right, can you hear me now? Yes, you have three minutes, Ms. Goldberg. Thank you. Black lives matter in Teaneck. It doesn't matter just for 90 days. It matters every day forever. I am appalled at the council's offer 
to the Black Lives Matter committee on one of two parking lots for the mural, either the road to center main lot or the overfill lot. Neither has visibility and neither says Teaneck is proud to display this mural. The Black Lives Matter mural needs to be on a street and in a prominent location where it'll be seen by everyone. Maplewood, New Jersey, not New York City, Maplewood, New Jersey has not one, but two murals, one on a residential street and the second in front of their police department. Sweeping this under the rug to say, oh, look, we did it. You didn't do anything. This mural is a disgrace. The treatment to the youth who have been working diligently is a disgrace. The committee showed the mural artwork with names to the Board of Ed and the Board of Ed overwhelmingly supported it and is voting to pass it tomorrow. One meeting, not back and forth nonsense for three plus months and inconsiderate statements by mayor and deputy mayors. As a voter, I demand a Black Lives Matter mural with Philip Pinnell's name on it in a prominent and permanent location. Shame on all of you. I'm done. Thank you, Ms. Goldberg. Reggie Pittman. Reggie Pittman, you have three minutes, sir. All right. Um, good evening. Good afternoon, everyone. I was calling as part of um, a person that's on the uh, Black Lives Matter uh, mural committee. And I just want to say it's been a long, arduous uh, journey for us to get here, but at least we're at some a point of um, agreement and hopefully the council will pass it. And I, I just wanted to um, be on record as saying thank you for um, not giving up on uh, the mural. Um, I heard the other comments and um, I'll just reserve my comments to say thank you for moving this forward. And uh, we look forward to this being the first of many steps. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Pittman. Mr. Howard Rose. Mr. Howard Rose, I see you are unmuted. I know that we have some technical difficulties sometimes with you, Mr. Rose. I will go, go once, go twice. Can everyone else hear me okay? Just nod your head counsel if you can hear me. Thank you. Mr. Rose. Mr. Rose, there he is. Got there. Thank you very much. No problem. You have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm glad to see some good discussions going on in the council that uh, are not just discussions, but actually the holding of you taking action on different items. Ellie, you made a point of extension possible of 90 days to a second 90 days uh, at a later date. Uh, is it possible right now just to amend what you're voting on to make it 180 days while you're gung ho, go forward in the right direction? Second thought, uh, Doug, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Rissi Owen has provided a lot of information about voting and whatnot. Uh, I, I'm making a request that uh, was initially said by uh, Art Vatsky, which is it'd be great if there was a sign on the concrete walkway with an arrow indicating ballot box pointing to the ballot box. That's semi difficult to see when you go by it. So just to make it easier, more evident, more visible might be helpful. Thank you very much for your time. Good luck with finishing this meeting. Thank you very much, Mr. Rose. I'm happy that we were able to wait up for you this time. I am bringing in now James Veach. Mr. James Veach, you have three minutes, sir. Can you hear me? I can. Mr. Veach, can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right, cool. So you have three minutes. Thank you very much, uh, Doug. Thank you. Uh, just a comment and, uh, and a question. Uh, first of all, uh, this council uh, has, is advocating a program now for um, honorary signs to honor businesses in Teaneck, um, like Dougie's Barbecue. 
Um, and when those signs go up, they go up quickly. And if you go to the, to the field house now, you'll find a beautiful plaque. The field house has never been opened. We don't know when it'll be open, but there's a beautiful plaque with all the names of the council persons. I think Mr. Shadanian's up there. Beautiful plaque, expensive plaque. A few years ago, we got involved in controversy trying, the town did, trying to lease space in the green belt to a, an electronic billboard company. Of course, we weren't entitled to do that. It was a reserved Rossi space, got ourselves in a lot of trouble. But when we want to do that, this council really moves. When it comes to the gay pride flag or the mural, boy, this council drags its feet, looks around, stirs up people, causes division, drags its feet and delays and delays. As Sandy said, you gotta make these gestures in an appropriately prompt fashion. The second thing has to do with the election and the referendum on open space. Um, I, I want people to read this referendum very closely and I want you to realize that this fund has collected since 2004, um, $7,888,924. And the fund has dispersed $5,115,350. And since 2004, uh, this township has bought an open space 0.556 of an acre. In other words, slightly over half an acre of property, the equivalent of three or four building lots, small, small homeowners lots. You have one minute, Mr. Veach. Thank you, Doug. Um, I want you to try to go on the website and find an accounting of these trust fund monies. You're gonna have a hell of a time. It's, not, it's very difficult to find in one place where these monies are going, but I'll tell you where they're going. They're going to things like fixing the roof of the Rota Center or building a $500,000 water park or resurfacing tennis courts or exercise equipment, et cetera, which is permitted. But my point is you think you're voting for open space, you're not. So I'm asking this council today to pledge that you'll spend at least 50% of the monies you collect over the next four years on actually acquiring property like the soap factory like the Siegel and Siegel factory, actually purchase some open space instead of using this fund as a slush fund. Please find the paper things speech. that are covered by the capital budget. Vote no if you do not trust this council on this referendum. Thank you, Mr. Veach. Libby Klein. Libby Klein, can you hear me? Libby Klein. Okay, I hear you. Nice, cool, you have three minutes. Thank you. I'm pleased to see that there's some movement on the Black Lives mural, Black Lives Matter mural, but I am concerned and disappointed that A, it has taken so long as many people have pointed out and I, what I'd really like is an explanation for why is there a time limit on this? Why, why does that need to happen? There's no reason why this can't be a permanent placement. I, don't, I just don't understand. So it's a simple question and I would appreciate an answer at some point in tonight's meeting. And the second question I have is, why does this mural not include Philip Pinnell? I understand that it's not a part of Teaneck that we're proud of, but it is incredibly directly relevant to exactly the message of a Black Lives Matter mural. It is the very personal, personal to us as Teaneck residents of how that's not worked, how that's not been honored in the past. And we owe it to him and his family and the people who have tried to turn this town into a better town since his death, since his murder, that we, we owe it to them to be able to acknowledge and we need to own up to this. And if this is really an authentic statement of our town about our be, choosing to be anti-racist instead of support the racist system, systems that 
exist in America, and I'm sure in our town as well, in those systems, if we really mean that, if this is not just a performance, then there's no reason why Philip Pinnell should not be part of this mural. It is part of our whole history and God willing, it will not be part of our future. But, you know, as the saying goes, if you don't know your history and you don't educate about your history, you're bound to repeat it. So two simple questions, why a time limit? And I've heard that council members are not interested in having Philip Pinnell's name on here, but I've never really heard anyone explain why. What are you worried about? What would be the problem with that? So I would appreciate answers to those questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Klein. Debbie Eliyahu. Hello there. You have three minutes. Thank you. First of all, I do want to thank you, Doug, for all that you are doing to get the voting process as smooth as possible. Um, I also would like to ask why there is a time frame on this mural and why it is so incredibly short. I also would like to ask why it is stuck next to the reeds in an off-site parking lot. I think that it looks to be an effort to hide it like under the rug. And also, um, I, I didn't live here when, when Philip Pinnell was, was killed. I've tried to read about it. And I saw Philip Pinnell's sister when she came to, I believe it was a board of adjustment meeting. And she is truly trying to heal what has happened in this town. And I've heard her speak. And I think that that would go a long way to bring about healing. And I think that, that that would go some way to bring this about. And I, I also would like to hear what is the objection to uh, having his name, especially since from what I've read, he was shot in the back with his hands up. Also, in regard to the marijuana issue, when this was brought up and there was an ordinance that Teaneck would not allow any sales of any paraphernalia, et cetera, in the town, I kept asking, why this why there was no exemption for med medical marijuana medicinal marijuana and i was told oh that would be included it wasn't specifically mentioned unless i'm wrong in the ordinance and now that there's going to be a it's on the state public question if i'm not mistaken there's nothing in the town ordinance that says that there is an exemption for anything medicinal which means that those of us who are in need of medicinal pain management uh, and who have doctors who could conceivably prescribe it would not be able to purchase any of these things in our own mun municipality. And I would like somebody to please relate to that. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, Paula. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, Paula, you have three minutes. Great. Good afternoon. My name is Paula Madison Reiner. I am the president of the National Coalition of 100 Black Women, Burden Passaic Chapter. And the mission of the National Coalition is to advocate on behalf of Black women and girls in the areas of health, mm -hmm. education, and economic empowerment. I'd like to speak today to the Black Lives Matter mural. First of all, it saddens me as a Teaneck resident that the council has not fully supported the Black Lives Matter mural. I'd like to commend the young people for their perseverance, for their dedication to this mural. Teaneck likes to claim its diversity, yet to only approve the mural for 90, possibly 100 days is a disgrace and a slap in the face. The Black Lives Matter me movement does not mean that one group should be valued over another, but it means that 
we acknowledge and support the inequities and inequalities demonstrated against Black lives. For this meager display of throwing the youth a crumb by displaying this Black Lives Matter mural in an overflow parking lot for 90 days is an insult to the entire African-American community and others in Teaneck. The council should be ashamed of themselves and they have demonstrated with this action that black lives do not matter in Teaneck. And I'm appalled to be a Teaneck resident. I employ the Teaneck council to look at a permanent solution to this issue and to really show that all people in Teaneck matter. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Mr. Allen Sohn. Mr. Allen Sohn, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear, sir, you have three minutes. Section 215 of the Township Code, paragraph C, uh, regarding meetings specifies that, quote, the business of a special meeting shall be specified in the call for such meeting and no other business may be considered. While I support the proposed resolution walked into the agenda, the matter was not specified in the call for such meeting, nor is there any urgency to this matter in advance of a meeting scheduled for next week for a matter for which ballots won't be counted until November. Get a ruling from the attorney and table this resolution for the next scheduled meeting as appropriate. Regardless of the mumbo jumbo about the manual on uniform traffic control devices, many cities have found a way to paint Black Lives murals onto major streets. In New York City on Fifth Avenue and in Washington DC on Pennsylvania Avenue, governing bodies have found a way to send a loud and clear message to the most powerful that Black Lives Matter through murals that are visible to the public at large and especially to the rich and powerful on the floors above. These street murals were created in timely fashion after the tragic murder of George Floyd. This council went to tremendous effort to drag its feet and wear down the mural committee. Mayor Dunleavy spent eight minutes at the last council meeting weaving a bizarre narrative claiming that there was a vast conspiracy to push some political agenda in creating this mural. The choice of a remote overflow parking lot in a remote area across the street from Voti Park and the Rota Center, sends a powerful message to the powerless members of Teaneck Black community that your voices have not been heard and will not be. This mural cannot be seen except by those who deliberately choose to visit the lot. There is no possible place to see it from above. As the resolution states, this council only believes that Black Lives Matter for three months, subject to a possible three month renewal. After six months, I can assure you this brief period of respect will return to its sorry state of malign neglect. The shameless refusal to negotiate in faith with Spickham, the mayor's ultimatum to the committee sends a powerful signal that neither he nor this council majority cares about the concerns expressed by the committee and by the overwhelming majority of residents. Why? Is this a matter of hypocrisy? Is this dishonesty? Is this racism? But what frightens me most is that there is another possibility, and that is all of the above. Whether it's the treatment of Denise Belcher, the shameless efforts to ignore and isolate Councilwoman Romney Rice, or the months of delays and dishonesty with the Black Lives Matter mural committee, this council majority clearly believes that Black lives don't matter. They don't want to hear you. Shame on you and shame on the entire council. Thank you, Mr. Sohn. Ray Goldberg. Ray Goldberg, can you hear me? I can. Um, I'm, somehow when you turn me on, my it popped out of Zoom and popped back in. Three minutes? Yes, sir. Thank you, Doug. Um, uh, I share uh, some concerns about why it's taken us so long to get here regarding the Black Lives Matter mural, but we are where we are. I, I think that the language of the resolution is extremely powerful. Um, and I wanna make sure that we don't uh, ignore that. It, it makes the case about why Black Lives Matter because all lives 
can't matter until Black Lives Matter. And it makes it in very strong language. And I think it's very well done. I have three very minor suggestions for wording, but they're really, they're, they're clean up and they're minor. And I'll, I'll try to throw them across when I can. Um, how, however, I, I don't understand the timing. I don't understand why 90, I don't understand why another 90, I don't understand why there's any time limit at all. So I don't, uh, I don't feel like I need to speculate a motive. I think we're trying to shoehorn this into existing practice regarding things that are much, much more trivial uh, to say the least. That's my guess, but whatever the reason is, it's 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 really um, uh, it's really not necessary, and I think that um, it, it's hard to tell. I, I'm I'm not a lawyer, but it, it feels like there's an uh, an over an over concern on the uniform traffic code as an obstacle to painting something on a street, um, and I think that there's a lot of strength in just doing what a lot of other communities are doing, which helps it the black community feel like lots of towns are doing the same thing and recognizing them in the same way. I think that would be far better than uh, painting it where it is. I'm not prepared to condemn where it's being placed, um, but I don't really like it. Um, the three suggestions regarding wording are number one in the, in the opening paragraph, there's, the, there's a word missing. It should say that they are endowed by their creator. Um, number two, uh, that's obviously just a, a typo, essentially. Number two, um, in the seventh paragraph, it says many of us can never be able to experience. That just feels clumsy. I think it can say, although many of us will never experience. Um, and that's the end of my comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Goldberg. Rosalind Powell. Rosalind Powell, you have three minutes. Need to unmute yourself. Hi, my name is Danilo Paolima, not actually Rosalind Powell, I'm her son. I uh, recently moved back to Teaneck after being away for a few years, but I'm a graduate of Teaneck High School. What was, yeah. your, what was your name, sir? I apologize. Oh, my name is Danilo Powell Lima. All right, thank you. And uh, recently moved back to Teaneck, I'm a graduate of Teaneck High School. And uh, from what I hear, the, the you know, uh, I've, you know, having grown up in Teaneck, um, we always talk about how we are a diverse community. And, you know, I'm coming back here and I'm hearing that we're unable to do even the tiniest bit of, you know, symbolic, uh, performative, anti-racist work. So it's, it tells me that, you know, perhaps we're just, you know, we're a diverse community when uh, it is useful for our public image and we are not able to serve um, you know, even the emotions of the people in this community. Um, what else was I thinking about? Yes, like, please don't be, don't talk about how, or don't prop up this image that Teaneck is a, uh, a diverse community and then fail, continuously fail to reflect uh, the diversity of the needs of the people in this community. Um, and if you're not able to do something as simple as this, um, then you are absolutely incapable of doing anything that is significantly more meaningful, anything that is going to um, substantially impact the lives of the black and the other oppressed people in this community. And um, if that's going to be, you know, as I get more acclimated with the council's work here, if that's going to be the case, then, you know, there's going to have to be efforts to, um, uh, put in place a council that is more reflective of the needs of the people in this community. Thank you. And thank you, sir. I am bringing in uh, Rev Sullivan. Rev Sullivan, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, what's, what's your first name just for the record? Fred. Fred, Fred Sullivan? Fred L. Sullivan II. Oh, thank you, Fred. Uh, you have three minutes. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I am uh, pleased to have the opportunity just to say a couple of things about what is happening now with the Black Lives Matter uh, mural. Um, I've read the, the uh, uh, resolution uh, not very closely. Uh, notwithstanding any perceived power in the words that are organized, I think that the placement, the timing, uh, the overall 
uh, consideration of the statement being made visually um, is quite different from any powerful you know, or bold statement that could be made vis-a-vis um, uh, -vis the, the resolution itself. Um, put simply, I don't think that there is a better way outside of doing nothing to make the statement that Black Lives Matter than to set it to the side in a place where most residents will never see it uh, and to make it uh, a temporary installation so that at some point it goes away. Um, reading the signs of the times, basically what you're saying is that Black Lives will matter for the moment and at some point in time, it will no longer be a consideration. Uh, I employ the council to revisit and revise its plans, given that as one person's already said, Washington DC, uh, New York, New York, and Newark, New Jersey, among other cities and municipalities around the country have found ways to safely put this in practice uh, in Washington DC's sake uh, or case, uh, adjacent to the White House. Uh, I find it unconscionable to think that this should be placed anywhere else besides somewhere immediately adjacent or proximate to Teaneck Road and Cedar Lane or some other prominent place if you're going to make the statement. I'm a graduate of Teaneck High School. I was a college student watching television in my freshman dormitory when I saw the library and police area with uh, uh, and the after effects of unrest after the, the murder of Philip Pinnell. And let me tell you, Teaneck has a statement that it can make and an opportunity that it is allowing to grip, uh, escape its grip by not being bold and prominent with this message. And in this case, also timely. Uh, don't miss this opportunity and this moment to say that historical guarantees of performance are no guarantees of future results. Let's be who we say we are and let's stand up and do something that makes a statement and then stand behind it to make sure that black lives matter and all lives matter, but of course all lives can't matter until black lives matter and everything that is done in this township. Please find the period, Mr. Sullivan. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Natalie. Yes. Um, Natalie, good can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Is this Natalie Addison? Yes, it is. You good have afternoon. Yes, Ms. Addison. All right. Good afternoon to all. I just have a comment to make on the BLM uh, ordinance. And it was only two things. And it was basically what other uh, residents had spoken about. It's the 90 days, and then they're going to do an extension, which would, if they do the extension, it would be 190, 180 days. I don't understand that, why they have to be a limited of days on it. And my next thing is the location, the overflow parking lot at the Rota Center. When I read that and saw that, right in my heart and my mind, this reminds me of Rosa Park and the bus. It's like telling us the black people, you're here and you're put at the back of the bus. I think they could have done a better location for this mural, but that is my feeling. And I hope that the council will really look at this uh, further and make this something permanent and in a better location. And that's my thoughts and feeling. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you, Ms. Addison. Ms. Mayers. Hello, can you hear me? Loud and clear, Ms. Mayers. Please state your name for the record. Christine Mayers. Christine, you have three minutes. So I first wanna take a moment to really give credit to the young people who were a part of the Black Lives Matter mural committee. Odane Karibi White is a freshman at Morehouse University. So he has many things to juggle at the moment. He is also an artist, a son, and a well-rounded young man. 
Kastai Sanchez is a sophomore at Teaneck High School and a truly gifted young lady, academically strong and also a member of the tennis team. So the, the burden put on these young people's shoulder, even with the help of the adults in the committee, was really, was really serious and they, they really shouldered it well. So I really just want to take some time to talk about that. I am really impressed with the wording of the resolution. There were some errors as the other man mentioned. I happened to mention and read some of it in my history class today. And so we caught some of the wordings, but I am still impressed with the powerful language. I do believe this is an opportunity for more groups in town to organize and for more murals to be created. I was recently in, if you're in Harlem or if you're in Brooklyn, I was recently upstate New York in Troy, New York, and there was an abundance of Black Lives signage and murals. So if this can be a springboard, that would be a great thing. And of course, we would like more murals with names on it. While some in the community may not like the location, I feel let this be a place of gathering let this be a catalyst again to more murals. And let's not also forget the Philip Pinnell tree of healing that has recently been planted in Tryon Park. Let's begin to activate ourselves as a community to really engage and organize and demand to see the changes that we want to see. Again, I would like it to be a permanent resolution, but I don't understand all the logistics. Maybe there's a cleanup, maybe there's a monitoring of things. But I do ask the community to really be in support of these young people, to really inspire other young people to do things of this nature and to help them. And again, you can reach out to the Black Lives Matter Mural Committee, the Teaneck Youth Initiative. There are so many organizations in town and we just need to really come together and make this a place where we see representations that Black Lives Matter, that LGBTQ Lives Matter, that Latinx, that all people, our Asian community, that all people in Teaneck matter. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mayors. I am bringing in a truck. Hello, can you hear me? Chuck? Yes. Oh, Dr. Powers, you have three yes. minutes, sir. Thank you. Well, as, as this council knows, I always say, see the glass is half full rather than half empty. And so I want to sort of take uh, time to mention the fact that a very large group of Teaneck residents were there in Bernard Brooks Park on the 3rd of October where the town had helped support the new tree of healing for Philip. Is, is there some reason why my video is not on? Where the, the tree of healing where Philip Pinnell was honored by a very large group over a very long period of time. And on that brochure, what do we find? The police department being part of that part of that process. That's a very good sign for this town that the police department was part of that tree of healing. And then the board of education last week moved decisively, not for a for a temporary, but for a permanent, very broadly visible. Black Lives Matter mural with the Board of Education's on the Board of Education's property. A substantial statement that there is a unanimous support within that younger community. Is it possible that the 90 days that this council has decided to limit itself might be a time in which it could actually learn to actually walk the talk, learn the council speech, which would provide for a permanent mural in a proper place. And this town would say, no more Pinnells. We're about the process of recognizing where we've been and where we are going. And we are for Black Lives Matter in a real way. Half full, you have time in 90 days to learn to speak better. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Powers. 
I have a phone number here um, ending in 552. Someone calling in 552. I believe you need to press star nine. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Please state your name for the record. Natasha Pinnell. Natasha Pinnell, like thank to, you. You have three minutes. Okay. I would like to thank all of the town's residents of Teaneck that's supportive of the BLM mural. And yes, it was a long and hard road, but I also would like to thank the council for at least agreeing to having something to acknowledge that Black Lives Matter and TNAC. Um, I wanted to address uh, back where one of the residents or a few of the residents asked the question as to why you don't want my brother's name, Philip Pinnell, on there, because that question was never answered. But I know that initially, um, either Deputy Mayor Katz or Mayor Dunleavy you spoke about there was a difference in opinion as to why you didn't want it. So I guess that was your answer as to why you didn't want my brother's name on there. But clearly the difference of opinion was not within the town's residents. Clearly it was coming from you both. So I also posed the question once more, because I asked the question before, why don't you want my brother's name on there? Because it is a part of TNAC history. Um, I was, actually just bawling my eyes out and crying because of the simple fact that my brother is dead and gone and we can't bring him back, but we can learn from what happened to him and we can move forward and continue to heal. And you can't heal unless you acknowledge that something did occur. I'm not here to place my brother back on trial. I'm not here to place the police officer who killed my brother back on, on trial. I'm here to move forward and acknowledge that my brother's life did exist. He did have a sister. He did have a, a mother and a father who loved him. We, we were a family. We were a unit in Teaneck. We lived there for over a decade, just about. I attended Thomas Jefferson. So I, I, my love for Teaneck will always be there. So it was like a slap in the face to hear both Mayor Dunleavy and Deputy Mayor Katz for you to say that you don't want my brother's name on there for whatever reason, and you're, you're so strongly for that. You're standing on your word, and you're not telling us why. And I just want to know why. I also would like to address the council, the entire council, because I was expecting you all to be at the Tree of Healing Memorial to heal, but it also shows you all disposition, all of you all disposition, that you're not ready to heal when it's concerning Philip Pinnell. And that's okay because that tree was replanted, the plaque was, is in the ground, and that will always forever be a part of Teaneck history, as long as someone does not come and destroy it. Lastly, I would like to thank Dean, Deputy, um, the city mayor, uh, city manager, Mr. Cat, I mean, excuse me, Mr. Kaczynski, I'm getting a little tripped up in my words because this is not easy to fight against this, this atrocity that's been occurring for the past 30 years of my life. When my mother and I did not bring up Philip Pinnell, when, when in the wake of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor's killing people in the streets, people protesters were screaming Philip Pinnell's name. People in Brooklyn painted my brother's name on the mural in Brooklyn as Ms. May has just, just stated. I'm not going to get too much into that because I'm getting a little shaken up right now, but I just wanted to no. thank the BLM committee. I also would like to thank uh, Dean, Kat, uh, Dean Kaczynski for you never wavering on your word. You sending your guys out, Kevin, Justin, and the DPW team. They did a phenomenal job. They did not uh, mistreat me and my mother, my mother and I at all. They were so, so helpful. And I thank Dean for doing that. He has stood by the police. He has also stood by my family and he has done it in a dignified way. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. P Good. Javalda. Hello, good afternoon. You have three minutes, Ms. Powell. Yeah, I don't know that I can do it after hearing Natasha Pinnell. I'm all <laughs> shaking up right now. 
But um, as a member of the BLM uh, um, mural committee, I can understand um, the frustration that we're hearing from people in the township. Um, those are some of the same concerns that we've had all along since what, June, July. Um, and I just wanted to say that in terms of the location, of course, our first um, proposal was for State Street, then Palisade Avenue. Um, however, given the fact that the council and the representatives that we met with talked about all of the legalities and that it would not move forward um, due to those, then they had offered to do it as council speech on uh, council property, which would be the lot at Rota Center. We did then suggest the overflow lot. And the reason I, I think it's very important for the public to understand this is that we're not as concerned with the political motivations. Everyone makes their own mind up. You know, we've been months at this and you can see where people stand on different issues. Um, it's more about the educational piece. And also we see this as a location where we will be coming together to paint the mural, but not just that one time, we plan to have all types of events there for um, education, vigils, things like that. So different organizations can also use that location. We know that it's about to get cold. So um, in terms of being able to do that, we hope people will um, join us in getting this mural done. And it is more for our young people to really understand our history and why when we say Black Lives Matter, that we really do mean it. And for those that don't really mean it, it's time for them to be more educated. And I think that through this process, more people are being educated. So we just wanna keep that up. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Powell. Odane. Odane, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can. Awesome, you have three minutes, sir. All right, thank you. Um, so hello everyone, my name is Odane Creepy White. I am a Teaneck High School graduate class of 2020 and a Morehouse College freshman. I'm also part of the Black Lives Matter mural committee. And um, you know, just to, to echo everything that's been said by um, Ms. Pinnell, Ms. Pinnell, Ms. Powell, and Ms. Mayers, um, I think the our purpose with this mural isn't for this mural to be the end. You know, I think there is, is it definitely took a little bit too long, definitely took, took too long, but I'm glad that we're getting something done that we can actually physically see and walk and, and feel. But I also think that we need to emphasize that this really isn't it for us. This isn't the last thing that we're gonna do. I think we should continue to try to have murals around the town because there's no reason for this to be the only one in the Board of Education. And in addition to just murals, I think actual um, education, as Ms. Powell said, is needed because honestly, I had no idea about the Philip Pinnell incident and I lived down the block until I learned about it in Ms. Mayer's class. And that's a problem. My brother doesn't know about it until I told him. So I think there needs to be definitely more education and more events that go on following the painting of this mural. Excuse me. And um, yeah, just, just to remind the community and the township that we do hear and appreciate your support. And, and also for the town council that since Black Lives Matter, and if you do believe that they do, then this will not be the end for us as a community and for us as a town. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Janice Dorman, calling in Janice Dorman. Janice Dorman. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning me in. After listening to everything and reading the resolution, I just could not stay muted. I read it and my heart sunk. I'm a mother of two black boys that were born in this town, being raised in this town. And the location of where it is, it's in the corner. You're putting black people in the corner. 
it sends a strong message that you don't care about us. You don't care about, about my young boys in this town. It saddens me. I don't usually call in, I pay attention, but I could not stay muted. Something else needs to be done. It needs to be changed. I understand Ms. Powell, why the decision was made to put it there. Yes, we can use it for many other things, but it's sending a strong message in this town. Teaneck, wake up. You have to come out and vote. You have to vote the right people in office. Wake up. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dorman. Thank you. Doug, I don't see anybody else in the queue. Neither do I. Okay, then uh, good, and, good and Welfare is closed. Uh, I'll now turn to, uh, turn to council members for their comments. Uh, and we'll start with uh, council member Rice. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First, I'd like to say thank you to the students particularly and the members of the BLM committee for their steadfastness, their commitment to this for the many months um, and for the fact that there were many concessions made, but that we have at least gotten to this point. Um, and I'd also like to especially thank, um, as was stated, the comments from O'Dane, Ms. Powell, uh, Ms. Mayors, those who have been in the trenches in this work, that they believe too, and as I believe, that this is just gonna be the beginning point, a beginning point of continued conversations, continued healing and collaborative works opportunities for perhaps even our public and private schools and our students to continue to break down barriers, learn our common history and carve out a future without racism and hatred as we learn and continue to learn about each other and try to break some of the silos that have become erected in our community. I believe that there's many lessons to be learned um, even through this very process to get this far and that those lessons will carry us forward in terms of negotiation and whose voices truly matter. I also like to really thank a lot of the community members. I'd like to also ask that we take heed to the suggestions of uh, Mr. Goldberg, those edits grammatically, um, if we could address those uh, particularly, and also if there could be elaboration on the questions that were asked about the omission of names. Um, particularly Philip Pinnell, and I had suggested if the name is not painted, perhaps there would be a ceremonial opportunity to address that particular piece of history as part of the educational components that we would use to move forward. Thank you. Okay, um, Council Member Pagan. I want to thank you, Mayor, this council, our staff, and the community members, especially the kids, for staying persistent and working so hard to make this mural happen. This new mural, as well as the renaming of Elizabeth Avenue, Black Lives Matter Way, which by the way, will be the only street in Bergen County called Black Lives Matter Way. And the Board of Education mural is proof positive that in Teaneck, we recognize that Black Lives Matter. So thank you to all for helping make this happen. And as for the residents, asking about the 90 day and 180 day limit. It comes down to budgeting, maintenance and responsibility. The mural was a collaboration between council through the mayor and the committee requesting the mural. And both parties came to a mutual agreement on design, location and duration. So thank you again to all involved for helping make this mural happen and let's get it done. Thank you, Mayor, I yield my time. Thank you. Um, Council Member Kaplan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I really wanna thank uh, Ms. Mayors and those that came forward to recognize how much effort and hard work uh, went into this. I also wanna thank uh, the mayor and those on the town side uh, that were working on it. Listening to the comments here, I'm reminded that it's truly hard to navigate what might be best. It's a bad location for one, it needs to be permanent for another. It's powerful language to one, another finds it meaningless. Um, it, it, these are difficult situations. And 
Um, I also want to mention that, you know, we've heard from others that couldn't be here at the meeting that uh, spoke out in favor of this undertaking. I know we can't hear from everyone in town, so I certainly uh, do appreciate those that reach out to us uh, either by email or through other means. Uh, seeing the efforts of Odin Kirby White, Kasai Sanchez, and others, it, you know, it, it's not easy. It's a reminder of the hard work it's going to take here in Teaneck. It'll require a lot of us talking to one one another and having hard conversations. There's a uh, proverb that says, while you're not required to finish a job, you can't shy away from your responsibility to address it. And as Odin said so poignantly, this isn't the beginning of Teenex Reckoning. And as we can see today, it's certainly not the finish line. We're going to do exactly what he mentioned, um, as I mentioned before, and I talked to him about a little bit uh, by phone. Uh, we're working on murals throughout the town, so we can know about uh, those that made Teaneck what we are today. And regarding uh, race specifically, those that know our history know that our town has made a lot of strides in the past few decades. For those that aren't aware, I certainly can't speak to everything, but the Advisory Board on Community Relations, the um, uh, Police Community uh, Relations Bureau, and others speak to those strides that have been made. So uh, I do want to thank everyone that came out. I really want to thank the students that worked so hard for this. And uh, I look forward to addressing a lot of the comments. Um, and I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Oregon. Um, I also um, want to thank Odin and Kasai for all their work and for the exercise that they put into this. Um, and their patience, because um, every time you speak to them, they are, or every time they speak, they are respectful. Um, what Ms. Mayer said actually resonated the most with me. Um, and I agree with Councilwoman Romney Rice that education is the most important thing right now. We are starting a project that I don't think another town has. We're hoping to paint another mural in Voti Park, which will... Um, be permanent and uh, Ms. Silverberg will take your $100. Um, we'd like to go through the high school. We discussed it this week and hope that the students can help us in choosing role models. Um, we've spoken to the library so that we can um, videotape about those role models and um, make that a learning experience. And I agree, we need to learn about each other's history because that um, is the only thing that will bring us together. I know that the mural is uh, symbolic to many people to, um, and it's a very passionate thing, but it has to go past that. And we have to be able to stop and talk to each other because at the end of the day, that is what will bring us together. And um, when I heard about that parking lot, I actually think it's much different than the parking lot um, that's right in front of the Rota Center. It is for the most part empty and it is visible. And um, I, I think that that was actually, it, my opinion differs than others, but I think it, it is a um, good choice for where the mural is going down. Um, just to answer a couple of other questions, um, if, if Mr. Shadanian could opine on um, the agenda and the resolution, the marijuana resolution, and also to answer Ms. Eliyahu, um, medicinal marijuana um, was never brought up. And to my knowledge, the council was waiting for the state before making any decision. The planning board did discuss uh, marijuana and um, while they were not in favor, um, they were in favor of medicinal marijuana. I'm a pharmacist and I am um, very much in favor of medicinal marijuana as opposed to uh, narcotics and opioids and the things that they do to people. Um, and Mr. Goldberg, who has become a sounding board for me, I did read the um, resolution and uh, on Yom Kippur, the um, the holiest of our, our holidays, Jewish holidays, we have a custom to um, to say all of our, our sins and the things that we've done wrong. And I think this resolution does that and it brings us to a, a point where we can hopefully then move forward. Um, but we need to speak to each other, not call each other names and not yell at each other. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Organ. Deputy Mayor Schwartz. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to thank everyone that worked hard on this. Obviously, it wasn't easy. 
Um, plenty of people wanted it, didn't want it at all. Plenty of people wanted it somewhere else, uh, wanted it now, now, now. And to the committee of students and parents that met with you and worked uh, with you, thank you very much. And of course, to you, um, Mayor Dunleavy and Deputy Mayor Katz, thank you for your patience in putting forth uh, what I hope is something that we could um, and listen to everyone else learn from and um, move forward with and keep what we learned in our minds and in our actions going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Katz. Thank you very much. I too also would like to recognize and thank the mural committee and uh, their patience and uh, working hard to uh, try to achieve this goal. Um, and listening to uh, Mrs. Powell and, and uh, some of the members of the mural committee, I realize that there's a greater vision than uh, just putting it in this parking lot. Um, I, I was not the one who suggested this parking lot. Actually, we suggested um, a, a different uh, location. And um, I guess the committee went and looked at it and decided on this and got back to us. Um, but now I hear the vision and I, and, I, and I don't think that, as it was mentioned, this is not the beginning. This is not the end. We're gonna continue doing more um, and it's gotta be more than just symbolic. Um, but I do wanna recognize um, the committee for all your hard work. I do want to recognize uh, Ms. Powell for your, for your great comments and uh, uh, Reggie and uh, O'Dane and Ms. Ms. Mayors. Uh, you guys were spot on and, and uh, we appreciate it. And uh, we're going to work harder together as a community and hopefully this uh, will, will um, unite the community, which is the intention, which is what was mentioned several times. Um, so I'm looking forward to being part of this as well. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Katz. Um, let me just do one uh, before I talk about the mural. Um, I did find out uh, today that um, we did receive the uh, certificate, the temporary certificate of occupancy for the field house. Uh, so we'll be moving forward with that and starting to use it as soon as possible. I know someone brought that up earlier as to what's going on. It wasn't with us, I can, I can assure you that. Uh, I've, I feel like I've lived with this mural for, I don't know, virtually my entire mayoralty. Um, and the group knows and the council knows that I wanted something. Um, I thought it was important for the town to have something. Uh, and we had to dialogue. We had to talk through some issues, both with the committee and amongst ourselves to try and get us to a point where we thought we could do something that was in the best interests of the town. Uh, I think Chivaldi's comments about the placement uh, are, are very, very important. Um, we gave them the option and they selected it. We, I shouldn't say the option. We actually didn't mention the parking lot, if I recall, and they were the ones that brought it up um, and, and they wanted it. And so we gave them options and they got back to us and they picked it. Um, as for the, as for this being it, uh, this was never looked at by me as being it. Um, this is the very, very start of a process that I think, and I've said this many times before, that I think Teaneck is in the best position possible to be the leader in this. Um, we can do the symbolic things, but we also have to do the hard things. And I think that we will be able to do that. That's why I've been spending my time talking to FDU about putting some faculty members together to try and do a lecture series on this. Uh, and I'm hopeful that, that I will hopefully in the next month or so be able to uh, announce that. And I wanna bring in the library uh, to uh, increase those opportunities as well in terms of learning experience. Cause I agree, education on the history uh, and education uh, we learn from in order to make the right decisions for the future is the only way to go. But I know this council found it very important to have what they felt was a unifying symbolic message for Teaneck. And we felt that this mural was the best thing that we could get together to do. I understand that the, the timing thing seems to be an issue for some people, but <clears throat> realize that the, the mural committee, 
obviously will assist in some way, but the mural committee is responsible for its maintenance, as it says in the ordinance. And so we did not want to set a forever moment because we're not sure whether or not they're going to be able to meet that responsibility. Everything is fluid. And uh, we, will, we will maybe talk about this again going forward. But right now, we think this is the best way to go as we build those other educational opportunities for everybody in town. Uh, somebody mentioned the timing issue of this. Well, I know this started early on, and I think, Dean, you had the first meeting with them, and then I, I came into it. Um, there was a lot of things, just like anything worth doing, uh, there is a back and forth and a negotiation and a compromise. The Bill of Rights and the Constitution is a compromise. And we had to use those types of values, American values, to get to where we are today. So I know some people are not necessarily happy with exactly what we did or where we did it, but I think you have heard the truth as to why it's there, what, what our desires were, that we wanted a forward-looking uh, symbol of the future and our support for the Black community and, and our unwavering support to get rid of racial injustice throughout this country. And no one should ever think otherwise of this council uh, in regards to this. So again, I thank, I thank the students, especially as others have. It's been, uh, uh, I hope as they look back, I think a very good experience for them, an educational experience. It certainly has been one for me uh, as being one of the, the first major things that I had to undertake as mayor. Uh, and I look forward to uh, partnering with this group. I know they want to do educational things. Uh, I am more than open to talking with them about how we can help do that, uh, because that's the way we have to go, I believe. So, okay. Um, we're now down to voting. Now, uh, I, need, I need to ask John a question or Doug. Uh, on this, it, it mentions resolutions. It does not mention that it's a consent agenda. So do I have to take a vote for each one of them? You can you can do them all uh, by one vote as as by consent. But um, before you before you take that action, um, uh, if it's if I can have a, a minute, I'd like to answer Councilwoman Oregon can uh, raise a, a couple questions oh, that she had asked absolutely. me to answer, which yeah, I haven't done yet. So um, the first one. Uh, I believe was with respect to the question about the agenda um, that came from uh, former Councilman Sohn. And uh, I'm going to uh, say once again that he's wrong as usual uh, with his uh, 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 bombastic statements that the, uh, that the ordinance provides that the meeting has to be noticed in a particular way. What the ordinance says strictly is that there has to be 48 hours notice. And what all the, the statutes say that govern uh, special meetings or any meeting is that there has to be a 48 hour notice requirement. Our ordinance says that we can call a special meeting, that the special meeting is going to be for the, for the item that it is called for, but it doesn't exclude the fact that there may be related items to that. And if, we, if anyone uh, took the time and a former councilman Sohn took the time to read the language in the resolutions, there was cross-reference language regarding the BLM mural, as well as the issue of uh, the um, pardoning uh, individuals who are in possession of marijuana um, that is an amount for personal consumption. That's my paraphrase of what the resolution says. So, uh, you know, that is completely consistent with not only our ordinance language, but also with the ordinance language or with the statutory language for the Open Public Meetings Act. So that's my answer to the first question. Uh, and I think the second question, I wasn't certain it was about medical marijuana, but I wasn't certain exactly what the second question was from Councilman Oregon. Was it, was it that why medical marijuana isn't? No, it was sorry. a statement. It wasn't a question. We're good. I'm sorry. I thought there was a second question. I apologize. Okay. All right. Councilman Rice has a question, Mr. Mayor. I think she's raising. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. Go ahead, Councilman. Um, yes, Mr. Mayor, I was just wondering if we were going to address the concerns about the language um, in the first paragraph, um, 
that we would insert the word that they are endowed that was um, Mr. Goldberg had suggested on edit. And I was just wondering if we were gonna address that or if there's something that um, I mean, doesn't it, matter. I, I don't think, I don't think John, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think the words changed any of the intent from what I, I heard. I don't think they did. However, uh, however, if the council so chooses to make a motion to amend the language of the resolution to make those uh, three uh, minor amendments. And I was, I can say to the public, I was very grateful for the comments about uh, the wording because I uh, obviously I had something to do with uh, with helping with that. So that was, uh, so that's, uh, I'm glad that everyone did read it and did see how impactful it was. Um, but uh, as far as changing it, if the council would like to make a resolution to uh, to amend those, uh, that language, we can make that, my, those are all minor amendments. They don't affect the substance. And I think because they are so poignant, I think that it would be nice to make sure that they are grammatically correct. Councilwoman Rice, do you want to make a motion? Um, yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we amend the resolution to include the edits that were suggested, particularly the uh, grammatical uh, corrections, so that the poignant words are indeed taken at the value that they bring. Thank you. I'll uh, second the Scrivener's error. Uh, it's moved by Council, Councilwoman Rice and seconded by Councilmember Kaplan. Uh, discussion? Hearing none, Doug, can you call the roll, please? Yes. So again, this is to include those uh, critiques and corrections from Mr. Goldberg, correct? Attorney Shadania, did you get those down? I did, I did, Mr. Clark. All right, awesome, thank you. So that was a motion from Councilwoman Romney Rice and I believe that was a second from Councilwoman Organ. Or Cap uh, I'll, I'll give it to her. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Councilman Kaplan. There you go, Councilman Roy. Councilman Kaplan. Yes. Councilman Oregon. Yes. Councilman Begon. Yes. Councilman Rami Rice. Yes. Deputy Mayor Schwartz. Yes. Deputy Mayor Katz. Yes. Mayor Dunleavy. Yes. Amending the resolution 210-2020 with the aforementioned uh, corrections. All right, uh, so now we'll move to the two resolutions. Doug, do you have to read them? Um, I, I do not believe so, but I will if you'd like me to. No, okay, I just didn't know if you had to read them, okay. But again, if we're going to do it uh, uh, like, like a sweeping motion, I just wanna remind everyone that this is including Councilman Kaplan's walked in resolution, which we assigned number 211-2020 which was to uh, the, the expungement of marijuana charges. Okay. Can I hear a motion to approve the two resolutions? I make like a motion. Second. second. Okay. Deputy Mayor Katz, and I didn't get the second. I'm gonna that say, was, yeah, that was Councilman Romney Rice. Councilman Thank Romney. You. Okay. Discussion? Hearing none. Doug, call the roll, please. Councilman Kaplan. Yes. Councilwoman Oregon. Yes. Councilman Begon. Yes. Councilwoman Mommy Rice. Yes. Deputy Mayor Schwartz. Yes. Deputy Mayor Katz. Yes. Mayor Dunleavy. Yes. Resolution 210-2020 adopted as amended and resolution 211-2020 also adopted. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Deputy Mayor Katz. So um, resolution 210 has a provision in it that allows for an extension uh, by the council. And uh, I would like to um, request that um, we ask the attorney to uh, start drawing up that uh, extension uh, to be placed on an upcoming uh, council agenda. Okay. So Deputy Mayor Katz is moving that we charge the uh, charge legal council uh, to produce a resolution uh, to extend for the additional 90 days uh, the mural. I'd like to second that second. motion. Council Member Rice, discussion? Hearing none. Clerk, can you call the roll, please? I'm mute. Right. Councilman Kaplan? Yes. Councilwoman Oregon? Yes. Councilman Begon? Yes. Councilwoman Romney Rice. Yes. Deputy Mayor Schwartz. Yes. Deputy Mayor Katz. Yes. Mayor Dunleavy. Yes. 
All right. Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Uh, Council Member Kaplan. Just before we end, I just want to give a uh, shout out to all the residents to remind them that ballots are in mailboxes and uh, they can be dropped off at the municipal building or uh, mailed in. And uh, we're hoping that everybody will vote. Yes, absolutely. And Mr. Mayor, we could also just make an announcement that today, of course, is the last day to register to vote. So if there's anyone out there that isn't registered, that they can still do so tonight. We yeah. are open here at the uh, north entrance lobby. The clerk's office will be here until 9 p.m. this evening as required by state statute. Um, and right. we will be accepting voter registration applications. Please come say hello. And please remember the Board of Ed and not only the state questions, but the counts, uh, the town question on the back as well. Yes. All right. There's no further business. Can I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion I to adjourn. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Have a good Thank night, everyone. Thank you all. Have a good night.